Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. With Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire, I'm Chuck Hines. We'll have Lady Raider basketball on the air for you tonight. They take on UC Irvine, and uh, Irvine is 4-2 and two on the season. Lady Raiders are 7-0 and oh on the season. One of their assistant coaches is a guy by the name of Derek Moore, or Derek Wynn. His, uh, his daughter, Jada Wynn, plays for the Lady Raiders. Mm-hmm. And uh, Coach Gurley talked about that. We'll get some comments, a couple comments from her this morning. But she, she talked about that yesterday and said that when um, – when they when they signed Jada because she's a transfer from Colorado, uh, they called uh, Coach Wynn and said, "Hey, would you like to play us?" And Coach Gurley's like saying, "You know, I know as a as a college coach, you know, when your daughter's playing, you, you don't get to see her play." So we we thought we'd give him a call, and he said, "Yeah, sure." And now as he's gotten closer to it, he's like, "Oh, now I'm having to play against my daughter, and I'm having to kind of root against my daughter, and you know, it's kind of it's just it's hard." And she talked about how it was hard for her. Uh, because she had one game at UTA, UT Arlington, when they played uh, Oklahoma State when her daughter was playing for uh, the Cowgirls. And um, I don't think, uh, I think she only got in for a handful of moments, but just, you know, the awkwardness of that, the uncomfortableness of that. So um, we'll see a little father-daughter action tonight uh, on the court at uh, United Supermarkets Arena. We'll have the game for you at 5.30, tip at 6 at... uh, on 107.7 Yes FM. Just just one little number for you. Um, and this is an initiative tonight is to stop them in the paint and to to keep them from, from scoring in the paint because they want to win that, that battle. And it's important to win that battle because Irvine, when they win the battle of the paint, they win their games. They're four and two. Um, they average 30 in the paint. Lady Raiders average 32 in the paint. They average giving up 26 in the paint. Irvine... You see, Irvine uh, averages giving up uh, twenty five point three in the paint. So, and that was a that was a problem against Rutgers, and that part of that's your size, um, and you're going to have to do a better job of containing things in the paint. Um, and so that's that's a, that's an initiative for tonight. One other initiative is to make more free throws than they attempt. And so you talked about that a little bit yesterday about how this has kind of turned into a free throw contest. To, to a certain degree, especially for Texas Tech, because they've done such a good job of getting to the free throw line this year where they're averaging 17 makes a ball game and their opponents are averaging 17 attempts per ball game. So you're doing a good job of not fouling. Yeah. And yeah. you're doing a good and, job of drawing fouls. And I think at the college level, the girls are better at um, playing good defense without fouling. Again, I think their high school level is getting adjusted to the new rules and <clears throat> They're not quite as good as you would yeah, imagine sure. at doing that as they are at the Division One level or whatever. But yeah, a lot, a lot of good things can happen when you're aggressive going to the basket. Whether you're finishing, whether you're getting fouled and getting to the stripe, or whether you're creating for your teammates. So um, the Lady Raiders are, you know, wanting to. If the goal is to get to the free throw line a bunch, that usually means you're being aggressive going to the basket. Yeah, you, you want that. Yeah, and then you you have not two that set, are, not settling for too many threes. Yeah, and you have two that have the ability to do that, and Bailey Maupin and and Jasmine Shavers. Uh, Texas Tech football news yesterday. Did this surprise you? Miles Price expected to go into the portal and transfer. Well, I would tell you, really, Chuck, nothing surprises me anymore. Okay. Um, but. I mean, coming from any of Tech's wide receivers this year, no, I'm not surprised. Yeah. It, it did not go well this year for, I mean, for the most part when it came to the passing game. And so <clears throat> um, it doesn't surprise me that one of those guys felt like he needed to change the scenery. And move on. He yeah, caught 160 balls uh, over the past four years, 1,746 yards, 10 touchdowns. And um, so apparently he is going to put his name in the old portal. And uh, that uh, the dates for that this year uh, for players who are not a graduate, uh, the non-graduates, that starts on December the 4th through January the 2nd. And then again in April, so presumably right after spring football for some teams. And depending on, I think Texas is going to be more like 
right before spring break, take spring break, and then be after spring break. I don't know if they've set they, – they haven't set the spring game yet, at least publicly. Um, and then the next portal window is the 16th through the 30th of April. Yeah, I don't think you're a better football team without him. I don't think this is something you can't overcome. And to be completely honest with you, I feel like it hurt. I, I think he was better as a punt returner this year than he was a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, Landon Peterson has uh, announced, he did this on Monday, that he's going to put his name in the portal. <clears throat> he started eight games last year, but then had um, a shoulder injury and um, only played in 11 games this year, mostly on special teams. So I think at one point in time, he was regarded as a as a uh, uh, just the high-level last, prospect. The last two years, I mean, the, just the – when you go back to Miles, the injuries have really, you know, killed him from being, a, you know, super productive. And then uh, Peterson, just a guy that, you know, we had helped you a little bit, but just was not, you know, right entrenched in the mix there. So, again, those are those are guys you want in your program and you want to, you know, grow with them. But yeah. we know that this this is the way of the world now. It doesn't necessarily work like that. Peterson is a fifth-year senior, and he's uh... – exercising his COVID bonus year to play in 2024. So we're almost done with that. Yeah. Almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure when the last of the COVID guys will be be done. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody asked this, uh, so will those guys be available for the bowl game? I mean, if you're putting your name in the portal, you're not going to play in the bowl game. Yeah, no, and, and unfortunately, this, this is where one of the – a gazillion things I'd love to see the NCAA change is that, I mean, I think these guys have to put their name in now because they're trying to grab a spot. Mm-hmm. There's only so many spots available elsewhere. And so they put their names in now, bail on their team and don't play in the bowl game. And because they're trying to make sure they have a new spot. Sure. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would love for them there to be some sort of um, whether it be you can't jump into the portal or there can be no contact, whatever, until after bowl games are done to keep these guys from leaving their teams early. And a lot, I mean, because I bet you Miles Price would prefer to play with his team in the bowl game, but he knows, hey, I, I got to get my name out there. I got to, I yeah. got to, I got to grab one of those spots that are available. I don't want them all to, to, to be taken. And so if he had the option, I bet he would want to do both, right? He'd want to play sure. with this team in the bowl game. and But right now you just you, – you guy can't do that. And see, in order to do that, and I would be – I think I would be in favor of this, is that you would have to move the early signing period until after maybe the national championship game. And then maybe you just do away with the traditional first Wednesday of February. Okay, help me out here. So if you how, – If how does – signing the high school guys because it takes up spots or it takes up positions so if you if you just move everything back if you move everything back then that solves that solves the problem of a coach leaving and then you know or getting fired and then the the players left kind of high and dry because he's already signed now, a lot of these firings and changes are, are are taking place right now you know right before the the signing period I don't know, just I'm just I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Yeah, I'm not completely following. It seems like you that you could assign all the high school kids you want that aren't eligible to play, and that wouldn't affect whether a guy sh- can hit the portal. And I'm just thinking about November roster spots or, and, and positions. Yeah, but they're not on the roster. No, but when you sign them, then they be, they're, then they're just they're part of the 85 or part of the 125. When you sign a kid. He's not. He's not eligible till next season. No, I know he's that. Not on the roster. Now. I, I know that, but I mean, they're gonna. They're, it's 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 potentially saying to they're they're gonna they're gonna take up a spot or they're gonna take up a position. Well, they are eventually. I don't know. I, mean, I just, I'm just again, I was just thinking out loud. I'm just thinking that if you moved everything back a little bit, I'm just like, why? Why is it so important to have the signing day December twentieth or twenty first, as opposed to? after the national championship game and then just do away with the first Wednesday in February. Yeah. There was a reason they moved it to December. I'm yeah, not exactly just, sure what it was. So guys could get that over, get with, that I over guess. with. And then, yeah. and then, and then, so not only they could get it over with, but then so they could enroll in schools, depending on when those respective schools there started. There that, you go. That's, that's, that's the primary, I think. 
and in more and more schools and you know at last at last word tech was going to have 10 or 11 guys who sign on the 20th uh, that would enroll uh for the spring semester mm -hmm. and forgo forgo the their uh, second half of their senior year to get to get ready and you saw a lot of those guys contribute this year because they did get you know acclimated to college and you know the the regimen of practice for the spring and the strength and conditioning program, the nutrition program, gain strength and weight and all those kinds of things, and and it paid off for a number of those guys um, this past this past season. May not have seen the result on the field that you wanted, but you got s some significant playing time for some uh, freshmen, or at least uh, availability for them. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I think this is a crazy story. I just, I mean, for, for all the people that can diagram plays and coach an offense, you, you would you would think that Arkansas could find somebody other than Bobby Petrino to be their offensive coordinator. But apparently the two are going to do a deal, and he's going to go back. Of course, he was the former Arkansas head coach, and he, he was doing quite well there until he wrecked his motorcycle. Uh, with his lover on his back, who was not his wife, on the back of his motorcycle, and she was working for him in the football office, and it all kind of unraveled very quickly. Therefore, uh, for Bobby Petrino, if you'd have asked me which school that happened at, I don't know that I would have even remembered that it was Arkansas. You would. I knew he had okay. his success at Louisville. Mm -hmm. I knew he left and went. I can't. I didn't even remember that he was at Arkansas. But that's where all the drama was. That's where the Does drama was. Does it help was. you if, you, I, if I say scooter? Yeah. yeah or motorcycle? I, it was, I, I mean, I can remember the story. Was, I just can't remember what school. And like I said, I haven't thought about it recently. He he, he wrecked his motorcycle, and and then she was riding on the back. And, and it, I mean, it just, you know, one thing led to another and led to another, led to another, led to another. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You guys are together, and she works for you in the recruiting office, and she was on your motorcycle too, and you wrecked it, and that's why your face is all skinned up. Yeah, um, sorry, you can't work here anymore. Uh, he had gone twenty-one and five the previous two seasons at Arkansas. I mean, he had him rolling. Mm -hmm. This is this is in twenty twelve, and of course, he left the Atlanta Falcons. Remember, he left that letter in everybody's locker. That oh, note. Yeah. He left the note in everybody's locker in the middle of the season to go to Arkansas, and then did the big whoop pig suey kind of thing, and. <laughs> It's just, it's just bizarre. He's been at Missouri State. He was at A and M this past year, and they apparently had, you know, obviously they did not have a great season because they fired their coach. But apparently, what he did uh, was was pretty good uh, from an offensive standpoint. And apparently, he's a good recruiter. Um, but as part of this deal, and and if I'm the university president who has to sign off on this. Because he does. I'm saying to the athletic director and the head coach, what the hell are you guys thinking? This is a guy that, you know, put our school in a really, really bad spot here. Surely there's somebody else that can coach the offense. Surely there's somebody else out there that would be a, a better fit for us than a guy that stained our name in Bobby Petrino. I mean, I, I think if I would have, if, if I'm the president of the University of Arkansas, I'm going to go denied. Because And here's why the university president is required to approve this. He was fired for cause during his last stint. The school has a termination policy. It states, an employee who has been dismissed for cause or has been des designated by their campus or division as not eligible for rehire shall not be eligible for reemployment within any of the University of Arkansas systems, campuses, units, or divisions. So basically, the university president has to has to sign off on this, which means if Bobby Petrino screws up again, then this guy or gal, whomever it is, probably should lose their job too because you 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 put the snake back in the hen house. Yeah, it's also one other thing to think about is it, it wasn't like that A&M just had this awesome season. No, no right. <laughs> like right. He took their offense to the great height. And he was only there um, a year. Yeah, he, I know, I know. Um, I, I, I'm with you, Chuck. Um, I... I Let's let me put it this way. We talked yesterday, um, and we've talked about it a million times before. N nobody cares about integrity. Nobody cares about winning with class. Nobody, th nobody cares. Nobody cares. 
It's just win. Just win. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We don't care. That being said, I don't think what Bobby Petrino did means he shouldn't be allowed to coach high school or excuse me, college football again. All right. Meaning, okay, what Bobby Tr Petrino's crime was was cheating on his wife. And okay? and and, right? and, and he, sleeping with an employee. Yes, and he also got her he got her hired. Yes. You know, there was some of that going on, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. But again, those are you're a bad dude. You shouldn't do that. You deserve to be fired. Not necessarily a crime. Okay? Yeah. All right. All those things are bad. Okay. So he embarrassed Arkansas and all the above. And they did the right thing with giving him the boot. Okay. So I feel like this man should, you know, be with those quote unquote crimes, should be allowed to coach in college football. He again. has. He's so, he's, yes. He's, and he has. He's, a billion, he's tried to. A lot of different places. Tried to build his name back up and he's been all over the place and all, all the above. And so, you know, good for him trying to, you know, keep going and you know, all the above. But at the same time. If I'm Arkansas, that's the one place to me that he can't go back to. Yes. He can't come back to that. No. I mean, no. you've embarrassed us. You have made us look terrible. Yeah. You have made us a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did all these things here that were, that, that were you know, fireable offenses here. Um, no, you can't come back here. Mm -hmm. But again, it just goes back to Chuck, a head football coach, an athletic director, and now school president. If, they don't care. If they sign off on it, they right. They don't care. Yeah. They just care about winning. And, and, and if you're an Arkansas alum, aren't you super proud? Right. We got Bobby Petrino back. There's probably some people that are down there going, Whoa! Yeah. Big Suey! You know. <laughs> and remember, I'd, forgot, I'd forgotten this. And as I scrolled down on this article, I mean, I, I had remembered the Falcons deal and leaving the note for his players, but I'd forgotten about this. In 2003, Bobby Petrino had a secret meeting with Auburn officials um, that um, while well, Tommy Tuberville was still the head coach at Auburn, as you know, there was a big uh, Auburn booster that flew him in. They were going to have this big secret meeting and then they were going to oust Tuberville because they weren't happy with how things were going. And that got all revealed and that all blew up on him. No, I don't think that makes him a bad person. It, it, I bet there's a lot of no, college football coaches coaches that are having secret meetings with other schools. No, I know. It's just yeah. because it became public, it just it just was it was it was a bad look for everybody. It was yeah. it was more of a bad look and, for Auburn and their officials than it was for Petrino, but and, he was involved in it. And I'm also not gonna act like there's not a lot of college football coaches out there that are probably you know, choir boys that are the choir boys. Yeah. Yeah. No. That are no, that I, have, had done no. some of the same things that Bobby Petrino did. But when it was exposed if Arkansas brings him back, they're, all they're saying is we uh, we just want to win, and yeah. nothing else matters. Yeah. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. That's uh, Grant McCaslin, the Red Raider basketball coach, talking about Hinkle Fieldhouse and the movie Hoosiers, and are they going to measure the court and the whole thing like that? So, I think that'd be that'd be that'd be fun to go. See a place like that. Absolutely. Do you have a Do you have a bucket list place uh, for college baseball that you've not been to that you like? If you if they were going, you'd be like kind of geeked up about it. At LSU. Uh, day or night, or does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What uh, What's the prospect of that? Do you think? Do you think they would ever do a non conference? Oh sure. Home and away, kind of with them. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I thought we were going to end there in the postseason last year, but. Send it there to Gatorland instead. And you, uh, it's is it, it is it the atmosphere more so than the park? Yeah, it's the atmosphere. I, I, the park, I, it's my itself. I don't like how it has all sorts of like <clears throat> one of the things they've done recently with Rip Griffin Park is that they've you know uh, on the fence doesn't have colored ads. LSU does, and I think it looks trashy. Okay. Okay. Um, just all different colors out there. Mm -hmm. It looks like a minor league ballpark. Old minor league ballpark. Yeah. Okay. But the atmosphere is great there, and obviously the baseball is great there. I just I would love to go to a football game in LSU, probably even more. Mm -hmm. Just because Saturday night game. Sure. Yeah. 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 I don't. It can be Saturday afternoon. I don't care. I don't need it to be night to be fun. But um, 
yeah, I I just think their fans always make it a great atmosphere, and so I'd love to go to see a game in LSU. Okay, so what about just like a pure, just a stadium, just uh, because of, not necessarily because of the atmosphere or the fan base or the team, but just like stadium. Or maybe you've already been to that one. Yeah, I don't, there's none that really jump out at me that like, man, I'm going, I, I mean, I guess just BYU just because it has a mountain behind it and it mm-hmm. looks beautiful, mm-hmm. like beautiful backdrop. Yeah, and you'll, you'll, you'll get to do that next year. Maybe. Not necessarily, but maybe, because we don't play everybody every year. Oh, no, that's true, yeah. So you could miss out on that for a year. Yeah, or, or, and two or three. Then maybe you'd catch a cold, and then you'd, that'd be the one trip you'd miss. And you'd be, it would take you. It'd take an awful lot, though, for you to miss a series, wouldn't it? You have to oh, come my back. kids playing basketball. Okay. <laughs> Your kids playing basketball. That's, 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 or that's, tennis. That's, that's, that's different. Yeah. yeah, that's different. 718 this morning here on the morning drive. Uh, what did you make of the college football rankings? That came out last night. This is the the next one that comes out will be for keeps. You've got um, Michigan is uh, is now number two. Georgia still one. Um, Washington is three, and Florida State is four. So the way that it looks now, and Oregon is number five. The way that it looks now is the Washington Oregon Pac-12 championship game is a, is the de facto you know playing for a college football playoff appearance which is cool it is cool yeah feels like that's what you want in conference championship games mm-hmm. do you think although both of them are probably saying um we both deserve to be in no matter what okay because so, if your only loss is to a top five team in the country mm-hmm. and you're a one loss team mm-hmm. man you, you could make a case right you could you could make a case the the thing that i guess kind of surprises me is that Texas is still behind Ohio State, but one person's article that I read this morning said that basically in order for Ohio State to get in, Florida State would have to lose and Texas would have to lose in the Big 12 championship game. Florida State would have to lose in the ACC championship game, yeah. which could happen to Louisville, which, sure. which, which could happen. They're only favored by two and a half, but I, I was surprised. I'm surprised that Ohio State's ahead of Texas. Uh, Texas has a better win than Ohio State with the the win over Alabama on the road. But mm-hmm. Ohio State, um, I feel like their one loss is better than Texas's. Okay, because Texas's one loss is to Oklahoma, which now is 12th in this week's poll. They're 10 and 2. Yeah, it would be hard to dispute that. And Ohio State's is to number 2 Michigan. Yeah, and you might say the strength of schedule for Ohio State is better than, than Texas. You might you might be able yeah. to you might I, be able to say that. Yeah, I, I think Texas obviously needs a good bit of help to get in. Mm-hmm. And and so does so does Alabama. Um, yep. And I don't know that Alabama can get there. I mean, I, man, it's just you know if they beat Georgia, they're going to make a. If they beat Georgia and Florida State loses, then there's going to be a cry for Alabama to leapfrog a bunch of teams. Truth of the matter is, I mean, I feel like the top 10 teams, include Penn State and Missouri in there, are all really, really good. Okay, really good. Mm -hmm. This would have been a great year to have a 12-team playoff. And this time next year, we're going to be talking about these games, a.k.a. Washington and Oregon, and going, hey, it doesn't matter. You're going to get in anyways. But it could be, well, you're playing for a first-round bye. Sure, sure. But you're going to, I mean, it's not going to have the... Man, you got to win this. To the get impact, in. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. feeling. But I mean, you're going to have, and it's going to it's going to end some of the theater. But like you said, the part of the theater would be, yeah, I'm you know, just, I'm just saying, a home no matter, game or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no matter what you do, it's going to change things. So there's mm-hmm. always a positive or a negative. Yeah, seven uh, twenty one this morning here on the morning drive. All right, back to uh, basketball and Coach Grant McCaslin. Uh, he talks about what he saw from his team, the Red Raiders. Once it started to click for them in the Bahamas after the win over Northern Iowa and then over Michigan. Yeah, one, it felt like our defensive identity was simpler. Like we, we started to kind of get a rotation where we could switch screens, but we could also, when we were in coverage, that we knew 
how we were closing out and who we were closing out to. You could just tell there was a different level of comfort in regards to the guys that were playing. And I thought we were really playing hard. Uh, and that's a big part of it, right? I mean, you play so many guys and sometimes the rotations can get out there and you don't know when your minutes are coming. It felt like we got more solidified and that really helped us, one. And then two, we took care of the basketball. So you didn't have those transition baskets you were giving up off turnovers that led to easy baskets. And then you're, you're playing behind. So I thought our offense really helped our defense, uh, but I, I did feel like our rotation got got simpler and it really helped helped our team. Red Raiders take on Butler tomorrow. Uh, 4.30 is when our coverage begins from Indianapolis. The tip is at uh, 5.30 tomorrow night from Hinkle Fieldhouse there in, uh, in Indianapolis. And then uh, no basketball on, uh, on Saturday or, uh, or Sunday. It's kind of it's kind of weird. I guess they just want to stay out of the way of football. I would guess that's part of the scheduling, uh, but I don't know that for certain. Tech's next action uh, at home for the men will be on uh, December the 6th. They'll play Omaha, and then they'll be idle for uh, finals and won't play again until December the 12th against maybe the, the best home game that you'll face in the non-conference, and that'll be against Oral Roberts. What's their record this year? I, I don't know. But, I mean, I mean, it wouldn't take much <laughs> to be the toughest. I mean, they could be un, they could be sub-500. They'd probably be better than A&M Commerce, and A&M Corpus Christi, and some of the others that you've played or will play. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they've been obviously a good basketball but, yeah, program been a, in recent a, years. Yeah, they've been a... You know, a tournament team. They're 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 not. They've lost some. They lost some players going in. They are two and four. Okay, yeah. I thought they were five. I thought they were sub five hundred, but I couldn't have. I wouldn't have been they able just, to tell you the the number. Just lost to K State by ten in overtime. Okay, well that that's. I mean that's credible. No, sure. That's that's credible. You know, K State's not off to the to the best of starts, but I'm sure they'll get it. I'm sure they'll get it turned around because he's a good coach. Uh, Lady Raiders will play tonight and then again on. Friday night, and then they don't play again until, well, they'll play December 5th, which I think is Tuesday, against uh, Sam Houston, and then they'll be idle until um, they take on UIW, and that'll be the uh, education game against mm-hmm. Incarnate Word. Nice. The perennial, perennial opponent, Incarnate Word. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. All right. In honor of Chuck's love of recycling, we are <laughs> going to recycle a question today. You, I am, I'm, and you know that I'm not a fan of recycling. <laughs> I think it's bogus. I think, I think people that think they're the recycling, the trash man just he throws it all in the same bin anyway. So I just think think trying to even kind of just purport the fact that you recycle is just just ridiculous. <laughs> Did you get what you wanted there? <laughs> Maybe a little uh, more. One of my favorite Chuck takes. <laughs> they just throw it in the same thing, then put it in the landfill. Yeah, nobody's recycling. Yeah, nobody's any recycling of it. anything. Yeah, they just, just they throw it all together. I mean, you mm-hmm. can you can have all these different barrels labeled recycling. We used to do that mm-hmm. here. I watched our guy do it. We had a we had a tra- we had a bin labeled for recycling. We had a bin oh. labeled for trash, and our guy just put them all together. I'm like, don't we recycle? He's like, no, nah, not really. We just say that we do so that it looks good. That just sounds like a lazy employee. <clears throat> could have been, but I mean, I think there's could have been. Could have been. Uh, I think there's, a, I think there's yeah, a lot of us sounds that like are a lazy employee. I think there's a lot of us that are, that fall into that trap. I think people that have your take are trying to make yourself not feel guilty because you know other people are trying to do the right thing and you're not, and so you're just like you say, well, it doesn't really matter anyways. They're not really doing anything, so then you don't have to feel bad. I don't even feel bad. I haven't even, I haven't even considered the fact that I should feel bad. <laughs> Rule number one. (laughs) It's four, but, you know, thank you for thinking that way. Okay. So my recycle question comes from yesterday's afternoon. Okay. Uh, I'm allowing you to pick three football players out of the transfer portal. Tell me what position you want for the Red Raiders. Okay. I'm not asking you to tell me which players. Which players, yeah. uh, Which position. Okay. 
Uh, I would say edge rusher. Uh, I would say um, left tackle and um, uh, a, a big kind of explosive get off the line receiver that okay. can that could that could separate himself from you know the defensive bang. It wasn't all of our receivers that had that problem last year. I mean, it was, it was just one in particular. That okay, was well, well, I want another the one then. Scrimmage. Yeah. Now, they, them not getting open is a different deal, but... Are, are we using the moniker that 50% of your uh, transfers hit and 50 of them, 50% don't? Or are we saying all three hit? I think that was before... I think that was before the transfer portal era. It, it was. That was. I don't know what the new number is. Yeah, you used that when you were dealing with junior college guys and guys were, that were disgruntled that quit another program. Now that quality players just leave their programs just for fun because it's cool to be talked about and go to a different program. And make more money I think somewhere you have, else. Yeah, you, I think you have a higher percentage of hits than you used to. Is okay. that fair? Yeah, that's what I was at. I, I yeah. could be convinced either way on mm-hmm. the on the conversation. Uh, since I don't need to get two wide receivers to make sure I get one, mm-hmm. uh, we'll go one wide receiver. We will go one edge rusher, like Chuck said. And I'm a bang for the buck guy almost always. Okay. Um, and I I don't need a, a five thousand dollar watch if a forty dollar watch does exactly what the same thing does. It tells time. What if it has an Under Armour logo in it? <laughs> or a double T on it. I mean, it's a Timex watch, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I mean, it's still got a logo on it, so I it's guess I would get the one I want. What about Adidas? Side. Yeah. But <clears throat> um, that being said, I think the biggest bang for your buck in a transfer portal situation is running back. Mm. Because they can come in and it's run to this hole, run to this hole, run to this hole, run to this hole, pass block. That doesn't change no matter what the offense is. They just have to learn terminology. Mm -hmm. So that transfers faster to me than, say, trying to get a quarterback or a bunch of defensive backs who have to learn the position. Yeah. uh, And how you want how you want those called and what techniques you're looking for those. So I go running back for my third. Okay. I feel like I have a lot of answers, which scares me. That's not to say that you don't have a lot coming back, because I feel like you do have a lot coming back. Um, but at the same time, I feel like you're losing a lot of key guys. And there's a bunch of different answers that that I could give you here. I definitely would just say, I'm, and maybe I would say this every single year in the history of ever, give me an offensive lineman. <laughs> okay, give me a quality offensive lineman, because you can never have enough. Uh, I'd have a hard time going away from... Uh, an edge rusher, like Chuck mentioned first. Somebody can get after the quarterback. To me, that was the difference in you being a good defense this year and you you kind of taking it to the next level. You just you got to get to the quarterback more and force some, some bad passes, help you create turnovers more, all, all the above. Um, and then for my third one, I, I'm, I'm kind of split between backup quarterback and running back, but I think I'll go running back. Um, but man, I, I would really like to have a veteran running or excuse me, a veteran backup quarterback. The only reason I didn't go quarterback and, and I'm with you is that I don't know that you can bring somebody in to be a backup. The whole reason they're in the transfer portal is because they were a backup. I don't know, man. I think guys are transferring to transfer. So they might be a backup somewhere else feeling like, hey, I got a better shot there. I, I saw what their offense was this year. I saw that Baron Morton or Tyler Shuck or Jake Strong struggle, struggled, so maybe I can take that spot. I see that every year they play three quarterbacks. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I'll get a shot. I don't know. I, I want to be third because I don't want to get hurt early. <laughs> I, I would love to have I just some experience behind – Baron Morton next year. And I don't know. I mean, if let's say, for example, if you're if you're Will Howard, are you saying to yourself, I have no chance to win that starting job? Well I'm not suggesting Will Howard's gonna come. No, I think it's but it's a it's an interesting question because Because I, I think Will if Will Howard decided I want to go play for Texas Tech, mm-hmm. I, I, it's a quarterback battle, in my opinion. I mean that dude's won a big twelve championship. I mean, I like Baron Morton. He's he's been my guy for a long time, 
but I think it would be a battle. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, Barron might go into to the spring as the leader in the clubhouse, but I, I mean, I don't know. I just in college football now, it, it, everybody it, plays more than one quarterback. It feels like so. I do feel like you have a chance to get a, a veteran backup. It, it's hard to snub, it would be hard to snub your nose at Will Howard. Yes, and I'm not suggesting we're going to get him, but yes, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, and I know you're not. Yeah. yeah. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. The Morning Drive on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. Today's Wednesday, day the work gets done. Uh, some things here from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. The Mavs aren't moving to Vegas. Why? They are supported and won't be a Mavs casino in Texas because gambling won't be legal in Texas while either owners are alive. Bingo. That's exactly why I think that he's sold the team. Because he wants to have a casino with with the gambling. And look, Vegas wants an NBA franchise. I mean, they've got the Raiders. That Allegiant Stadium, man, it is, it is sleek looking. It is. I didn't go inside it. It's just I've just driven by it. But man, it, is, it looks awesome. It really does. It looks. And the T-Mobile Center is right there. The A's are going in and just some. The Vegas locals that I talked to aren't really very happy about it. They're not happy about where it's going to go. Uh, it's going to it's going to go in a place where there won't be any parking. And um, apparently... That's going to work out well. That's going to work out well. <laughs> but there's no parking around T-Mobile, and there's, there's virtually no parking around Allegiant. I mean, this was crazy on Sunday uh, as we were flying home. So we're on the interstate, and we, we exit the ramp. And it's like 1040 in the morning. The, the Raiders are playing at 125. So we're less than three hours before kickoff. So we exit a ramp, and you go to your left, and you go back over the interstate, and Allegiance right there. You go right, and you go to where the uh, charter airplanes land. And we're talking about just like left and right, and the and the stadium is right there. There was no traffic going into Allegiant, and it's it'd be like okay, like Jones Stadium three hours before kickoff. You can't exit university if you're coming from the West, if you I, don't have a pass. I, I think the Raiders and an NBA team, hockey, probably works fine in Vegas. I don't think I don't think baseball will thrive in Vegas. I just, I, I doesn't feel like a good fit to me. Yeah, and, and, and the locals there were not happy. They're not happy about where the, the A's are going. Some of them really weren't happy about the fact that that it's going to be the A's. They felt like that you know it should be a new team and should be called something else other than the A's. And and a lot of them wanted it to be on the same side of the of the outside the the strip where the if you're familiar with Vegas where the Rio is. Apparently the Rio they were like, hey, we'll tear this down and basically give you this land. But the A's people wanted it to be closer to the strip because that's court where the action is. But I I would. Um... But the consensus was that baseball wasn't going to fly there. I think they should do away with the A's name, too. Yeah. Just leave it in Oakland? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean they're not the Oakland A's anymore. Right, right. They're, the Oakland A's have a long history and tradition and all that kind of stuff. I know I constantly crack jokes at them, but they have a... I mean, that history and tradition, it, it's not in Vegas now. Right, but they were also in Philadelphia, and they were also in Kansas City. And they were the athletics all three times. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a different time. They're not known for that. They, uh, they I would not t- known for that. I would tell you that if they're more known for anything, they'd be more known potentially. I mean, they're known for the Oakland A's. Let's just face it. That's. I mean, that's where they've they've been there for almost fifty years. Um, but even they were more really more known from for Philly than Kansas City. They they weren't in Kansas City that long. No, but I mean, my point is that they were the A's in all three. And they places. kept the name. And all they three. kept the yeah. Name they kept the name and they kept the. And somebody asked me about well, what about the uniform colors? I'm like, oh, they'll keep the same colors. They'll keep the same name. Not going to change anything. But with regard to the Mavericks and the somebody says the support that they get, so they averaged attendance is twenty thousand per game last year. I mean, if they put up a thirty thousand seat arena or thirty five thousand, they're gonna they'll they'll put thirty they'll put thirty grand in there in Vegas. They'll make more money in Vegas because of the gambling and the everything that goes with it. I mean, it's just you're talking about if the Dallas Mavericks move there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, NBA is never gonna let the Mavericks leave Dallas. 
they're going to put a new franchise there before they would take the Mavericks. Probably so. The Mavericks are a well-supported franchise. They're not going to say, yeah, you're allowed to leave. Mm -hmm. They're not going to allow that. I don't. Uh, the, you may be 100% right, and all the speculation that Vegas is going to get an NBA team yeah. feels like that's a perfect fit. It feels okay. like it'd be expansion yeah, too. But yeah, but they're not going to take just like they did with They're hockey. not going to take one that's thriving and that people show up to and people love. It's just, it's just, it's just a wild thought. Well, um, it's a, I mean, it's just, I, I think there will be a team in Vegas, but they're not taking the Mavs. The, the other, th the other thing is, the other thing is, is why, why would, why would Cuban sell? I'm just surprised. I'm first of all, I was really surprised that he was selling the team. I mean. Of course, when you consider what he paid for it and what he's selling it for, I mean, it's it's a huge, 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 huge profit for him. I mean, probably north of almost $3 billion. Well, how much well, has he spent on the team since he bought it? That's the question you got to ask if it's a profit. Oh, he's making a profit, Jeff. Yeah. My question or thought or wonder, mm -hmm. and maybe this is way out there, is that would Cuban, is he selling this so he can at some point slide away from the Mavs and he could be an owner in Vegas. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. And maybe the, Is that more up his alley. And, and maybe know. maybe the maybe his uh his new partner is then she's the majority owner of the casino arena. <laughs> no. I don't know. That seems all sorts of craziness there. It but, does it does seem also yeah. also but he bought the Mavericks for two hundred and eighty five million from H. Ross Perot Junior. And it's just now 23 years later, basically, 24 years later, um, has is selling it for three. So his his just his gain is going to be north of three point two billion dollars. I mean, and, and not even selling the whole thing. Yeah. And not even selling the whole thing. But it seems crazy to me that he would still be the governor, so to speak, and, and be in charge of all the operation. So is he going to have to go to her and say, hey, I want to sign this free agent? And she said, nah, we don't need to do that. We don't need to spend that money. That just seems odd. That just seems odd to me. It seems odd to me that... It's just surprising because you know how much and how active Mark Cuban yes. is, is the owner of yes. the Yes, right? yes. All those things, right? I mean, it continues to... It just always amazes me when we think about <laughs> everybody knows who the Mavericks owner is. Everybody knows who the Cowboys owner is. And I mean... How many people know who the Rangers owner is? Yeah, nobody. Yeah. We saw him at the championship win. That's the owner? Who's that That's, guy? Right. Who's that guy? Right. Yes. Right. I mean, you talk about stopping a thousand cars. Mm -hmm. No, Nobody. Can you name the Ranger? No. Do you know what he looks like? No. no. Jerry Do you Jones? Care? No. Do, no. Don't care. Don't want to know him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't care. I think it'd be cool to know him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody said this. I've heard that the American Airlines Center in uh, Jerry's place, uh, well, AT&T Stadium, will have a casino outside each facility. Right, but you're going to have to get gambling in the state of Texas first. And, and we'll that, get it right after Utah does. Oh, I don't know. I think you'll, I think you'll get it. So we it. don't think that that's ever going to happen? I think it's going to happen. Jeff doesn't think it's going to happen? And we'll get it right after Utah. Why, and, and why is that? Why do you think we won't get sports gambling here? Every time it's brought up, it is thrashed. Oh, it, I think it'll eventually. I think eventually get. I, I think it will, we'll see it here before. I think we'll see it in the next ten years, and if every, not sooner. And every place that would be like, "Hey, we need to do this here." There's casinos like two hours away, Houston, Dallas, out here in West Texas. We've got New Mexico just over the border. That if people want to go gamble, that's where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. So the fix is still there. But every time it's brought up, no matter what happens in this state, it gets thrashed. It's not even like a like a 58, uh, 42. It's like 90, 10. Uh, somebody said the Las Vegas Aces would be their name. That wouldn't they be bad. Keep the same logo. Yeah. Yeah, you sure could. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at DoubleT97.3.com.